Hey everyone, welcome back. Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about linked lists. We'll talk about what they are, we'll compare them to arrays, and then we will look at the different algorithms that we need for manipulating a linked list. So let's go ahead and get started. Now at the most basic fundamental, what a linked list is, is it's a series of nodes that contain a couple of things. First thing is some piece of data that you want to store. And the second thing is the memory address of the next node in the list. So these things can act as replacements to arrays. And their main advantage is that they are dynamic. That is to say that you can have as many nodes as you need at any time for storing the data that you need. Consider if you have an array, an array, once you've created it, is fixed in size. So maybe it has five elements and you've assigned some numbers to it. So eight, six, seven, five, three. Now, what happens if I decide that I want to insert a new value in here? Let's say that I want to put a value in between the six and the seven. Well, I'm kind of stuck because the array is as big as it's going to get. Now, I could just say, well, let's forget about the three. If I don't care about storing the three anymore, then I can move the five over, I can move the seven over, and then I could stick my new value in this element here. So let's say four. Okay, but I've lost the three, and I've had to pay for shifting all those values over. So that's not a good solution. Another thing, what if I want to delete something? What if I want to get rid of the six? What am I going to do? I can't just delete an element from an array. They're fixed in size. I could overwrite it, but I can't just eliminate that memory location. With linked lists, I can. So with a linked list, I might have eight, six, seven, five, and three. So I'm storing my integers. And then I also have, as part of each node, the location of the next node in the list, right? So I got the eight pointing to the six or referring to the six. I got the six referring to the seven. I got the seven referring to the five. I got the five referring to the three. Now, if I want to delete the seven, then it's a simple matter of deleting the seven. So I just update this reference, this pointer, from the six node to the five node, and then this make sure that I free this from memory. Now, if I want to insert something in, all I have to do is create a new node and then put the value that I want to store in there, the data I want to store in there, say four, and then place it in between two existing nodes. So I just update the reference or the pointer for that five node to point to my new four node. And then I have the four nodes reference point to the three node. And so in this way, I can add as many pieces of data as I need to my list and I can remove easily. So it's a lot easier to deal with here. Okay, now difference is that in some cases, it can be a little bit more tedious to perform this, right? When you have an array, if you want to access a certain value, say that four right there, then all you have to do is access its index or subscript. If I wanted to access this five in this node here, it's a little bit more complicated because we've got a bunch of references to each of the nodes and we have to do some traversal from node to node to node to get to that spot. So it's a little less efficient. So how can we represent a node in code? Well, if it's Java, we could do something as simple as creating a class, calling it node, and then having variables for storing whatever data we want. So we'll keep it simple. We'll just say we're doing integers. So say int x. And then we have to have a reference to the next node in our list. So we'll have something that looks like that. Let's call it next. So what about C++? Well, we could use a struct node and then have inside of our struct the data we want to store and a pointer to the next node in our list. In Python, we could have a class, call it node, and then we could have ourselves an initializer, and then we could do something like self.x equals, and then assign it, I don't know, whatever value we want, say zero, just because we have to give it something, and then we can set the next variable to none. Okay, so those are three ways that you could create a node or represent node in three different languages. So let's add some additional details. So a linked list has to have a reference or a pointer that is going to keep track of the first node. And this is often referred to as the head pointer or head reference or head variable. Okay, so in Java, it could be something as simple as this node head. And to designate an empty list, we're going to have that head reference set to null. So it doesn't have any valid memory location. Therefore, there's nothing that it's referring to. Therefore, there's no nodes in memory. This is a simple 
linked list. It's an empty linked list. So a linked list is empty when its head reference or pointer or variable is set to null. Now, how can we represent this in the abstract? I'm gonna draw a bunch of pictures here as we go through these algorithms. So we will represent this in the abstract as a box labeled H. And you know that it's empty when it's referring to null. So we'll represent that by using a zero here. Okay, now for our nodes, we'll represent them as a bisected box where the second box will be the next. So this is the next part. And then the first box will be the data that we are interested in storing. So in this example, this discussion, we're doing integer named X. Okay, now how do you know what the last node of the linked list is? The last node in a linked list is going to have its next reference or pointer or variable set to null in the case of Java, null pointer in the case of C++ or none in the case of Python. So we can represent that with a little zero as such. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go through different algorithms for manipulating a linked list. So let's start off with an empty linked list. Okay, now if we want to append nodes to this list, if we want to store new data in this list, then what we have to do is we have to have an algorithm, which we will call append. And that append algorithm has got to have access to a couple pieces of data. It's going to need access to the head and also the value that you actually want to assign to your list or store in your list. So if we wanted to add something to our list, then there's a few things that we have to do. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create a new node. So we can represent that in our pseudocode by doing something like this. We'll need some variable, which we'll call n, and we'll assign to it a new node. Then we will assign to that new node's x variable, its integer variable, the value we wanna store, and then we'll assign to its next nothing, null or Null pointer or none. So first things first, create the node and initialize it. Okay, now there's two possibilities when we have a list. Either it's empty or it's not. And with append, all we're doing is adding the new value, the new node at the very end of the list. And so that's why we're gonna automatically set its next to null because since it's append, we know it's gonna be at the end and we already defined that the last node in the list as its next point to null. So we've got those two options. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to determine which is our case, which situation are we in? So we know that we're in an empty list, we're dealing with an empty list, if that head pointer, if that head reference, so that head variable is assigned null or null pointer or none. So if it's pointing at nothing, and that's the situation with our picture right here. If that's true, then this is gonna be easy. All we have to do is assign our new node to the head pointer, okay? So just something as simple as head equals n, for example, if you're doing with C++ or Java, okay? You'll use whatever code is appropriate for doing that, okay? Otherwise, we have to find the end of the list and attach our new node to that last node. So we're gonna do that by creating a temporary pointer to help us with traversal, and we're gonna start off with the very first node. And while that node has a next pointer, next reference, next variable, that does not equal null, then we're gonna to move to the next node. And we'll trace through this so you can see it working. Now, once we get to the end, once this loop evaluates to false, the test expression error, then we're gonna have found our last node in the list. So P will be referring to that last node. And so then what we'll do is we will take that last node and we'll update its next pointer, its next reference, its next variable to our new node. So let's look at the pictures and let's trace through our algorithm to make sure that we understand how it works. So first things first, we create a variable called n, a reference, a pointer, a variable, and then we assign to it a new node. Now we're assigning to its X part, the integer part, the value. So let's say that we had append and we passed the head pointer and say 15, okay, something like that. Then we've created that new node. The 15 is gonna be stored in the X variable and the next is gonna be assigned null. Okay, so that covers these first three steps here. 
Now we check head to see if it's empty. Is it equal to null? We'll look at our picture. It is because it's pointing at nothing, right? It's pointing at null. So all we're gonna do is take the contents of N, which is just the member address of this node, and we're gonna assign it to H, overwriting what was in the H reference. Okay, so then we skip the else part and we're done. We've just added a node to our list. We've added a value. These guys go away because they're in local scope and we're done. Now, if we wanted to add another value, so let's say we call append and we want to do seven. So what happens? Let's look at our algorithm again. So what happens? Create a new node whose memory address gets stored in N. We assign to it the value, in this case seven, and then we assign next, it's next, to null or none or null pointer, depending on what language we're working with. And then we have our test. Is contents of H equal to null? No, because it's got the memory address of this first node here. And this first node has the head reference referring to it, so it's called the head node. Now, keep in mind that a node and a reference, a node and a pointer, are not the same thing. Our head reference is just a variable that holds a memory address. The head node is an actual node that's made of an integer variable, for our example, for our discussion, and a next reference. So, since this if is going to evaluate to false, we kick down to the else. So what do we do with the else? We create a temporary reference P and we assign it the contents of H. So what are the contents of H? The contents of head, the memory address of our first node. So in that way, both of these guys are currently pointing to that first node. So now our while loop kicks in. Well, P next does not equal null. Well, P next is equal to null. So that's false. That loop never iterates. So then we go down to p next set to n. So what are we doing? We're taking p next and we're going to overwrite it with the contents of n. Well, what's the contents of n? The member address of this new node here. So our picture becomes that. Okay, now once our algorithm's done, the temporary pointer reference variable p goes away, the temporary n goes away, and we're left with a picture that looks just like this. Now, is our linked list intact? We start the traversal from our very first head reference. That leads us to the node with 15 in it. And then we follow its next reference, the node that contains seven, and we follow its next, and we see that it's set to null. So we have a two node list, and we've been depending. So let's do one more example. And in this way, we'll see the traversal characteristics or logic that we need for append to find the last node. Okay, so let's say we're gonna add, I don't know, 12 this time. So let's look at our algorithm. First things first, we create and initialize that new node. So new node gets loaded into memory and we have that temporary re reference n and then we assign to its x the value, which in this case is 12 and we assign to its next null. We check the head pointer, the head reference, the head variable. Are you set to null? Nope, because it's got the memory address of that first node 15. So then we kick down to the else we create our temporary reference and assign it the contents of H. What's the contents of H? The memory address of 15. So P is now referring to that first node. Now we do our loop. While P's next, which is this reference right here, does not equal null, and it doesn't because it's got the memory address of the next node on the list, we set P to P next. So we overwrite the contents of our P with the contents of P next. What's the contents of P next? The memory address of the seven node. So P is now referring to, is now pointing to, our next node in the list. Go up to the top of the loop, check P next. Is it not equal to null? Well, that's false because P next now is referring to null. So the loop's done. So we go down to P next set to N. So what's P next? It's this reference right here. So what's in N? The memory address of the 12 node. So we're overriding the contents of P next with the contents of N. So our seven node is now referring to our 12th node. And so that's the end of the algorithm. So the N was temporary, has a temporary reference, the P was a temporary reference, and our list continues to grow. So that is how the append algorithm works. Now, what's the performance of the append algorithm? Well, we've got ourselves a loop right here. And loops are a good indicator that you're looking at big O of N. Now, why are we looking at big O of N? Because in the worst case, we have to traverse from node to node to node to evaluate where the last node is in the list. So if we have three nodes, then that's gonna be three checks. 
If we have 10 nodes, that's going to be 10 checks. If we have 20 nodes, it's going to be 20 checks. And by checks, I mean checking that P next for null, right? That's this test expression right here. So in other words, N nodes is going to result in N of these tests. And so this is going to be a big O of N algorithm. <laughs>